we all know Mazda can design a stunning car and make it drive beautifully, but an electric sedan, that's something they've never done before. This is a new all-electric Mazda 6, a car many have been waiting for, and you're just about to discover how far Mazda stepped outside its comfort zone with this one. So, today, I will not only uncover the boldest move in Mazda's history, I will walk you through 8 completely new things never seen on a Mazda before, just to show you how far they went to make this car relevant, and on top of everything, I will tell you how it compares to the daddy of electric cars, the Tesla. But, before we step any further, let's stop for a minute, take a step back and enjoy the stunning exterior design. I don't know what you think, but in my opinion, Mazda has delivered yet another masterpiece in exterior design. I mean, just look at it. The highlights include a sleek fastback silhouette with gracefully slope roofline, sculpted body, frameless doors, closed front grille flanked by ultra slim headlights, and a full width LED strip connecting the tail lamps. Alloy wheels come in 90 or 20 inch size, designed for airflow efficiency, available in gloss black or polished silver. The front grille isn't just closed for aerodynamics. As you approach it, it comes to life. It illuminates with a distinctive signature glow, and once night falls, it stays lit, giving the car a futuristic presence that's impossible to ignore. Well, what more can I say? I am a big fan of this design. And that being said, let's start with the first point on our list of things never seen on a Mazda. This is their first full electric mid-size sedan. It replaces the traditional Mazda 6 in most markets, entering the big league alongside competitors like Tesla Model 3, BYD Seal and Polestar 2. Previously, Mazda's only EV, the MX-30, was often criticized for its limited range and practicality. And that brings me to point number two on the list. Unlike the MX-30, this one is the first Mazda ever built on a non-Mazda platform. And point number three, this is also the first one built outside Japan. Yes, it's built in China. It sits on a Chang'an architecture, their joint venture partner in China, and underneath you'll find the Deepal SL03. Unlike many competitors who already have, Mazda has yet to develop its own dedicated EV platform. It will come, but not before 2027. Now what about pricing and options? Choosing between different available options is very easy. You have two versions, standard and long range, which you can configure in either the Takumi or Takumi Plus interior. The car I have right here is the standard range with the more expensive interior, so the Takumi Plus and the melting copper optional paint. And considering everything I mentioned, how much do you think this would cost? 60, 70,000 euros? You see, that's how much most of the people guessed when I asked them. In reality, it's priced at just under 47,000. But if you take the standard color and interior, the starting price is 44,290. Opt for the long range together with the nicer Takumi Plus interior, and the price goes up to almost 48,000. That's not bad actually. Now, what do you get for your money? The standard range comes with a small LFP battery, but it's faster and more powerful. 254 horsepower motor on the rear axle and hits 100 kph in 7.6 seconds. The long range comes with a bigger NMC battery, but less powerful, 244 horsepower and slower to 100 kph by 0.2 of a second. Yep, you heard that right. If you want maximum range, you don't get the most powerful motor. Unlike some rivals, Mazda doesn't offer a long range, high performance combo. But here's another one. When it comes to charging, the smaller battery charges faster. It supports 165 kilowatts DC versus just 90 kilowatts on the bigger one. Hmm, have you noticed the elephant in the room or did it slip by? No, it's not about the fact that the long range charges slower than the standard one. It peaks at 90 kilowatts on the fast charge, and that's way below industry average. That makes you question, what's happening? Is Mazda lacking battery cooling? Well, I've done my homework and this is not the case. It even comes with a heat pump as standard. And in a real world situation, you are looking at no less than one hour to charge it from 20% to 100%. Stop at 80% and you are still looking for a charge time between 40 to 50 minutes. That's quite a lot. What am I supposed to do in this time? Stare at the screen? It's certainly an unusual decision, and one of the quirks that definitely makes this car stand out. On the bright side, however, 
Mazda says it would stress the battery less, giving it a longer life. So, I won't count this as one of the 8 unique features on our list. The next one though, I will. This is the first Mazda ever to come with a frunk. It's not huge, 70 liters or thereabout, but it's especially very practical with this removable basket. Underneath you'll find even more space, but it's only for small items. Tesla's frunk is still bigger, but even so, Mazda still offers a decent size, very few competitors are matching. Trunk space is also behind the Tesla, 466 liters compared to 541. But where Mazda takes the lead is, it has a wider opening and a lift bag design which makes loading bulky items easier. There's no loading lip and underneath you'll find a small space but it's not enough to store your cables. Yeah, you see? You also have this floor mat, rubber, which I suspect this is optional. Here you'll find a speaker for the subwoofer and on the left side, this is where you'll find the 12 volt battery. Fold down the back seats from the inside and the space goes up to 1074 liters. Moving inside, the first thing that grabs your attention are the flash door handles. This is the fifth item on our list and another first from Mazda. They pop out as you approach and retract while driving to boost aerodynamics. Occasionally, they tuck away completely and that's when you'll find yourself hunting for them. For sure, this isn't revolutionary for the industry, but I had a hard time to explain my mother how to open the door. Never had this issue with the normal ones. But once you step inside, that's when you meet true Mazda craftsmanship. This Takumi Plus interior feels more like a luxury lounge than an EV cabin. Soft touch materials wrap every surface and the fit and finish is flawless. Compared to the standard version, the key highlights are the Napa leather upholstery, the suede accents, refined stitching on the dash, the door cuts, the seats, an electric sound shade for the sunroof, and some elegant details such as this brush metal around the air vents and around the central console. This actually feels cold to the touch. If this is real metal, I'm impressed. In the back, is a similar like story as in the front. Mazda has kept the same soft touch materials all around, instead of going for hard plastic, like others. In the middle you have a touch sensitive panel, you can control the fan speed and temperature, plus operate the sunshade and the passenger seat. You can move it forward and backwards and that could be both fun for you, but annoying for the passenger. And if you think this is a gimmick, you can actually deactivate this function from the main screen. Other things worth mentioning are the seats. They are comfortable but don't recline and don't provide much support underneath the thigh. That's because of the batteries underneath the floor which is sitting high. But as you'd expect this being electric has a flat floor. Then knee space I have plenty. Headroom I'm fine but taller people might struggle with it. As for storage spaces you have some in the you have to dig your hand deep into it. Some underneath your the central armrests or two cup holders, then some space in the front seat pockets and in the door panels. Overall, the interior of the Mazda feels luxury without pretending to be exclusive. You won't find yourself yelling at your kids to be extra careful with everything they touch. And here's the kicker, where Tesla goes minimal and sterile, Mazda delivers soul, craftsmanship and a tactile experience that makes you want to stay long inside after you drive it. But that just confirms what I've always believed. Mazda delivers not just great looks, but real soul. However, the infotainment is where they've always lagged behind. Today, the 6E introduces a 14.6 inch central touchscreen that controls nearly every function in the car, making a bold shift away from the familiar rotary and physical controls. And this is number 6 on our list. And another first time ever for Mazda. It's big and crisp, and unlike the Tesla, it supports wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But the real standout is the overall infotainment system. You don't just get the central screen, you get a driver display plus a head-up unit. And this is number 7 on our list. This is unique to Mazda, because this time is an AR unit. That stands for Augmented Reality, not just a normal one. It projects real-time graphics directly onto your view of the road. It places turn arrows right on the street you need to go, highlights lane guidance 
and even marks pedestrians or vehicles in your path. It's customizable too. It even includes a snow mode for better visibility in bright conditions. Personally, I find it very useful, but I do wish it had the option to tweak a little bit the clarity or make the display larger. My eyesight isn't quite what it used to be. The driver display focuses on essential driving information. It supports navigation prompts from Mazda's built-in navigation system, and while it isn't customizable, you can cycle through different kind of information, such as trip details, energy consumption, and more. Now, back to the central screen. As I mentioned, it integrates a lot of functions in a non-Mazda typical way. The sunshade, climate controls, and even key driver commands, like headlights and wipers. I know, but to make it easier, climate controls are always displayed at the bottom of the screen. Plus, Mazda provides two customizable buttons on the steering wheel to which you can assign any function from this list by long pressing them. Mm, fog lights are not here. And the wipers, despite not having them on the stock, the wash command still is, and a quick tap, you can activate them. Overall, this approach might feel unusual for long-time Mazda fans. On the plus side, you won't miss out on any safety or driver assistance features, regardless of the trim. And yes, it is a 5-star Euro Enca rated car, coming with adaptive cruise control with stop and go, front and rear emergency braking, emergency steering assist, and so on. Now let's break down step by step a short journey with the Mazda to see how easy it is to live with it and its safety systems. Even before entering the car, you can preheat or pre-cool the cabin. Mazda comes with its own app, allowing you to program such things. Then, as you approach the car, the door handles pop out. It comes with a keyless function and 9 out of 10 times works fine. But in case you need it, the key fob still provides physical controls for opening the car and boot. Getting in the driver's seat can be a bit challenging if you're a large person. The battery is underneath and lifts the floor. But in case you don't have enough clearance to the steering wheel, it's good to know the electric seat comes with the welcome function, which you can activate from the menu. It even remembers your settings, that's if you save them in advance, for the seats, for the mirrors and climate controls. Here I have the seat adjustment, then the mirror, and that will be associated with your key. Driving position is very comfortable. I can bring the steering wheel exactly what I want it, so I can naturally rest my elbow on the center console and on the door card. It's very good. Don't expect ultra plush seats, but they're still comfortable and supportive, plus come heated and ventilated. Buckle up and with a simple strike on the stock, you're in drive. Press the accelerator and the power brake releases automatically, and you're good to go. But that's when the ADA system kicks in. So how will it be living with it? But first, let me share with you how I'd like a level 2 ADAS capable car to be like for me. I'm still in control, so I want by default all the systems to back off, keep silent and watch for danger, step in only when I need it, not earlier, not freaking out on me unnecessarily. So will this car going to fight me or will we get along? Let's see. Ok, so tell you what I'm going to do. I stop the car, then I go in Smart Drive, deactivate everything, and see... Hmm, rear core traffic assist, lane departure, disable, door opening, disable, rear collision, disable, lane change assist, disable, everything. Right? Is anything enabled? No. Let's see in the next ignition cycle how many reactivate again. Ok, so I just stepped out and locked the car to reinitiate. Let's see now. Well, everything is active again. Ah, doesn't look encouraging. On the other hand, Mazda has given us a way to obtain the system, make it less sensitive. For example, lane departure switch, correction plus warning. The correction part I don't want, so I just select the warning. It comes back again, it doesn't correct me. That's really annoying. Warning mode. Sound. That's good, no vibration. Sensitivity, late. And so on. Yeah, it's a small plus. Driving this Mazda is smooth and easy. It has plenty of power, but doesn't give you the thrills like on other electric cars. My mother doesn't get sick when I fully accelerate this car, as opposed to my Volvo X30. The ride is quiet and refined, and the suspension, it's still firm but not 
harsh like in the Tesla. It's comfortable. And the steering has a reassuring weight to it, but it's still not as sharp as I remember with the old Mazda. At low speeds, feels a little bit spongy. On the other hand, what I notice, brakes are very sensitive. Just a light touch and they bite very hard. I would like personally to have more flexibility in adjusting the brakes, but this gets over the air update and Mazda could actually recalibrate with the software update the system. But anyway, until then, you'll just have to get used to it. Now we are on the open road and let's see the acceleration again. Yeah, it picks up, but at one point leaves you wanting for more. As I said, it doesn't give you the thrills as you normally expect from electric cars. You can select between different drive modes, but even in sport, the overall feel is more towards comfort. On the whole, I'd say Mazda drives comfortable and not as engaging as we've been used to in the past. This is more of a luxury cruiser than a sports car. Parking the Mazda isn't difficult, but there are a few downsides. Rear visibility is limited, especially in rainy conditions, since there's no rear wiper. Plus, it is a long car, so you'll need some time to get used to its size. Okay, let's see how easy it is to go in reverse with Mazda. Visibility out of the rear window is not that great, but you have the 3D camera. You can go 3D if that helps you. You have the park sensors and you also get rear course traffic assist and that helps. Yeah, not the best job, <laughs> but anyway, let's see with the front. How easy is to park in front of a curb because this has a low ride height. Oh, let's see, easy, easy, easy. Will it make it? Will it make it? Will I scratch it? Will I dent it? Just, just go slowly back, slowly, slowly. Yeah, that's a problem, you see? Be careful of that. Okay, now, before I go to my conclusion, here's number eight on the list. This, for the first time, comes as an ERV, which stands for Extended Range Electric Vehicle. It gets a smaller battery and a combustion engine, which doesn't drive the wheels, charges the battery only. That, however, you cannot get in Europe. It's only sold in China. Yeah, and one more thing. In the making of this video, I just cracked this lens. Look, friends, if you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. It costs nothing to you to do that, but to me it makes a lot of difference. Just so you know, I haven't made a single cent on any of the videos I'm making and I'm already looking at 900 euros to replace this lens. It really hurts. But now, back to our video. So, is this Mazda the best alternative to a Tesla? Well, here's the bottom line. Tesla is hard to beat as an overall package. It offers cutting-edge technology, incredible practicality, and a strong performance all in one car. But where Tesla can feel clinical and almost sterile, Mazda brings character and soul. It still delivers on the essentials, but truly shines when it comes to comfort, design, and refinement. It doesn't chase raw acceleration or flashy tech, yet doesn't rely on just the central screen for its infotainment system. And something else, before you go blaming Mazda for selling their souls to the Chinese, you have to consider this was a tough decision for them to take. I must admit, I also hope to see something else. A bit more consideration to the driver and the way he drives, especially in the infotainment area. But that just shows how important it is to compete in this segment. If you're not here today, you're soon history. But now I want to hear from you. Would you pick Mazda over Tesla? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification to see what's coming next. And until next time, thanks for watching.